Hi, this is Chris Brown of TPR Tools and creator of the Grand Work Regulation Station. Returning for the second half of my description of using the Grand Work Regulation Station for assembly and regulation of a grand piano action. Now, in the first half, we discussed work initial work done at the piano and bring that work out onto the regulation station and setting up an environment that replicates the salience of the environment in the piano that is fit of the keyframe uh, the profile of string heights along the strike line a positioning of the action that is very specific and each time we put it there it goes into exactly the same place. Anyway, one of the benefits of uh, the regulation station is analysis. And at the point at which things were assembled and uh, and the, the keyframe had been fit and we took the scale, uh, it was time to take parts off uh, the action stack and off the keyframe and do uh, the necessary repair work and preparation. And in the case of this hybrid action, um, one of the details I don't know if you can see it, but the original flanges were employed on new weapons because the size and configuration of the flange was very specific and that was a reasonable solution except that uh, the pinning was not properly done. So I was forced to take the weapons off to uh, pin the flanges. There was almost no friction at the balance here, so I repinned that. Uh, the jacks were pretty good. Um, there were some repairs to be made. The hammers came from a 26 bore set. They needed tail length trimming in the tenor. They needed reshaping. Uh, the hammers needed filing and uh, the hammers uh, shanks needed repinning. So that preparation work was all done and then the parts uh, reassembled. And at that point some analysis was needed to determine um, where to place the rails, essentially, the whipping rail, essentially, was our easiest uh, implement of change. And it had been in a place where the parts, the jacks, were way forward in their windows and so forth. It was just, it played like a truck. It did not work well. Uh, so by measuring spread distances, and by carefully placing the whip cushions over the existing uh, capstans and by carefully considering the address of the um, the jacks to the knuckles um, I repositioned the rails so that when I regulated them through with a standard uh, blow distance of an inch and three quarters and a standard dip of approximately four hundred thousandths uh, and a sufficient amount of aftertouch, uh, the action works. And in fact, uh, it, the action is now complete and ready to install in the piano and it plays 
very evenly and that regulation worked out well. But it was important to set this up ahead of time. One of the reasons it was important was because this rail had to be moved far, as far back as it could practically. The, the back of the key was trimmed to clear the rail but it wasn't trimmed enough to clear the rail in the position needed for these parts. So I had to re-trim the, the uh, blocks, blocking for the dampers. I had to cut slots out of the back of the rail so I could access the action screw. And um, actually I drilled holes through this rail to access that action screw. I had to repair, it looks bad, but I had to repair uh, the cleats which were torn out and so forth. So all that work led up to a place where we could assemble and begin to regulate. So the keys are in place. Key frame supported the way it was in the piano. The first step is to square space and level the keys. If the keys are way out of level, these keys were not, but if they are, you need to rough in a level that is reasonable. And to do that process, you have to make sure the shanks are off their cushions. In this case, I just removed uh, the rest rail. So I level the keys, I block up either end, I use a straight edge traditional manner. Uh, I put the punchings on by taking the top stack off and the keys off and so I end up with a real result and I do my key dip for the naturals with the Wessel Nickel and Gross block and I rough in the key dip of the sharps so that they're not buried between the naturals um, and perhaps they're a bit low of what I feel will be the final destination. And with that in place, I do the back checking. And <laughs> and okay, so I'm going to have to redo the sharp back checking. But by doing the back checking at this point, straight away, it allows me to set the spring tension. And with a real spring tension, I true up the position of the jacks under the knuckles. And I set a hammer line that then allows me I set the hammer line with my regulating rack and uh, what I like to do is to have the hammers have the, have the templates just behind the position of the hammers so that there is a a very small but distinct uh, space which you can either back light to see or in this case I have a piece of dark gray foam that creates a nice blackish line that is uh, easy to gauge and the benefit of setting a hammer line like that is that if as soon as the hammers touch the template, they create a little pressure which translates down through the system to the back rail cloth. So you can gradually end up not knowing where you are and the hammers are actually high but they appear to be uh, in place at the template. But if you set them to be a calculated distance away from the template, 
uh, then you can see exactly what you're doing. So we set the hammer line. And while the let off rack is there, the regulating rack, uh, again with with good light at the front and black behind or backlit, um, I do the winking. 